right before we jump into this video, if you want to take better pictures in only 11 days, I have a free mini video course called 11 Days to Better Photography that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is your user's guide for the Canon 77D. Now this is going to be a long video because I want to go through the outside of the body, what each of the buttons do, so I can help you understand what they are so you get it the first time around. I'm also going to go through the menu systems for photos as well as the menu systems for video, so why don't we get started right now. First things first, where does the battery go? Right down here on the bottom of the camera, you can go ahead and flip this door open, grab the battery, make sure you put it in the right way, boom, it clicks in, shut the door, and you now have put the battery in. I know it's simple, but first things first. Second thing, right here on the side, boom, open up the door, this is where your SD card goes. Now, the SD card can only go one way. You can see that there's a notch out of the corner there. You match that up, you find the hole, you press it in, boom, it's in. Shut the door and you're good to go. Now, how do you put a lens on this camera as well as take it off? Simple, right here, you can go ahead and see that there is a lens release button. You press this, and in this case, it's in my left hand, the camera body and the lens is in the right. I'm turning it towards me, boom, and it comes off. So this is what you see inside the camera. All I will tell you is do not touch anything inside the camera. Don't touch the mirror. Don't ever flip the mirror out of the way. Don't bother with the mirror. Stay away from the mirror. Don't even look at the mirror. Anyway, how do we put it back on? Red dot right there on the lens red dot right there on the lens mount, line those two up just like this, and then turn it away, hear the click, and your lens is now on. Three simple things, but there are three simple things you need to do at the very start to get going. So how do we turn the camera on? Right here, it is currently on off on this switch. Then you see it says on, you can flip it to on, and then the third switch right there, that is to go into shooting video mode or video mode. So for now, I'm gonna keep the camera off. How do you take a picture? Well, this is your shutter button. The shutter button gets pressed halfway down with a little bit of pressure to do the autofocus, and then you press it all the way down to take a picture. Right here is a command dial that changes your shutter speed. It also helps you go through the menu system to make changes. Right here you have your light. This will light up the screen on the top of the camera. Orange, it's not into glow, it's orange. Canon has always done orange. You can turn that off just by doing that. You can press the ISO button. That's gonna allow you to change ISO on the outside of the camera. And then you can change your focusing points and focusing modes by clicking this button right here. So that is the right hand side of the camera. Let's move on to the left. This is the mode dial. And the mode that the camera will come in most likely is in the auto mode. That is the green box with the A inside of it. That means that the camera is gonna do everything for you in terms of all of the settings. And it's gonna do what it thinks it should do to help you get the proper exposure and the best pictures and results. Now, what do you do if you're in a situation where it says no flash photography allowed? Well, in this camera, you can go to this mode right here around the dial, which is a lightning bolt with a do not arrow through it, AKA the flash will not pop up in this mode no matter what you do. Going around the top, we have CA, which is creative assist, some modes that I personally would never use. We have portrait mode, landscape mode, close-up mode, it's not macro, so just know that the lens is what causes you to get macro images, not the setting that shows a flower. Then you have the running man. The running man is what you use when you're shooting sports or shooting action. It's designed, these modes are all designed based off of what you may be shooting. So in one case, if you need a faster shutter speed for sports, the running man guy is gonna give you that faster shutter speed. It doesn't mean you're gonna get great pictures just because you go into that mode, but anyway, that's why that mode is there. Next up, you have a scene mode. This is the mode that you can go into if you're gonna shoot food or a bunch of different things. There's a whole bunch, like night portraits. There's a lot of different options inside the camera that will help you get better pictures in situations and certain scenes. Next up, we have creative filters. Just think of it as if it's like Instagram inside your camera. It's gonna do all those effects that you probably shouldn't do because it's gonna look cheesy, but if it works for you, then go ahead and use it. I'm gonna spin the wheel around this way 
Right here is manual mode. That means that you are in full control of your shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. You're making the changes with that. Uh, also, I want you to know that just because you put it in manual doesn't mean that the lens is gonna be shooting in manual. It still should be an autofocus unless you either switch the lens to manual or inside the camera say you're shooting manual. Then you've got AV mode, that is aperture priority, meaning you set the aperture and the camera is going to set the other things to get you the proper exposure. And then you have TV mode, it's not a TV so don't try to watch it, but TV mode is where you set the shutter speed, for example, 500th of a second, and then the camera's gonna set the ISO and the aperture for you, most likely, to give you the best results possible. And then P stands for program, not professional, and you set it into program mode. Uh, it's basically full auto, but when you're in full auto, and you'll see this in the menu system, it doesn't allow you to access the entire menu, but when you're in program or any of these manual modes, you can access all of the menu settings so that you can make the changes as you see fit. So that is the mode dial. Let's go to the back of the camera and we'll start right here. You've got a menu button, obviously you get right to your menu. Info button is what you press when you wanna see the info for each photo, you can press the info button. Coming around here to the top of the viewfinder, you have the diopter. This is what you use if you wear glasses or if you don't wanna wear glasses but wanna add some corrections to the viewfinder. This is your viewfinder, this is your diopter. The way that you set your diopter is make sure the camera is actually focused on something and then turn the diopter until it looks sharp for your eyes. Then right here, we have the live view button. So if you wanna do live view to take stills, you would press this button and it turns on live view. Now, if you're in video mode and you press this button, it's going to start recording video. So this is your start and stop when it comes to recording. Right here is your AF on button. This is if you wanna do back button autofocus. A lot of people like doing that. I personally don't shoot with back button autofocus, but a lot of photographers do love using it. Next up, you have this button right here. You see a checkerboard as well as a magnifying glass with a minus. This is when you want to see more images on your screen when you're reviewing them, or the next button is a plus button. That's how you zoom in on the images. Now you can also zoom in with this camera by pinching and zooming on the touch screen because that's what you have right here. This is your three inch touch screen and it's very angle, which means it rotates all the way like this, all the way back like this and down like this. Just remember, don't force it when it stops because you could break it. One of the things that some people worry about is will the screen get broken if it's in your bag and the screen is out? Well, if you're worried about it, simply turn the screen and you can leave it closed like this and it will be protected right here. So moving over to here, we have the Q button. That's your quick menu access button. So when you're looking at the screen, you can hit the Q. It's gonna open up the Q menu. It's really easy to get to. You've got your play button for playing back your images. You have the Wi-Fi button for setting up your Wi-Fi. You've got this command dial that rotates like this, which changes your aperture for when you're in either aperture priority or when you're in manual. You have your set button, which is basically the OK button. Then to the right, you have AF for selecting the autofocus that you wanna select. Down at the bottom is for your picture style. And then to the left is your drive mode for how you wanna set how many frames a second you wanna shoot. Is it one frame, uh, AKA single shot, or are you gonna shoot multiple frames? Also know that this can click up, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start. There is no BA or select select or start. Uh, then you have a trash can. That's if you wanna delete or erase your images from the card one at a time. I always recommend not deleting any images on your camera anymore, just in case you delete something that was actually good and you wanted to have it for later. This is a lock switch, so that will turn this dial off so you won't be able to make changes from it when this is locked. I personally leave it unlocked. And down here on the bottom of the camera, this is your tripod socket. This is how you put the camera on a tripod or on a monopod. And let's move on to the side of the camera. Right here is where you would put a, a remote in the top. And in the bottom is where you can attach a microphone if you wanna use an external microphone and not the one that's built into the camera. 
Then right here, you have your USB plug, as well as HDMI. USB is for if you wanna shoot tethered or you wanna transfer the files to your computer. I still recommend that you get a card reader and not worry about plugging this into the computer each time. And then you have your HDMI if you wanna show it on a TV or something along those lines. Now there's a couple more things I wanna show you on the front of the camera. Right down here, you have your depth of field preview button. This is a button I would never use. I've never used, even when I shot film, I didn't need depth of field preview because you know what? With these digital cameras, you know what your depth of field preview is? Take a picture and see if you have enough depth of field. That will work. Then right here, you have a flash icon that would pop up the flash as long as you're not in the do not use your flash mode. Uh, and then this is your flash. This is what pops up. This is where your flash is. And then this is your hot shoe. That's where you would put a larger flash or you would put an LED light or something like a microphone that could slide right into here. And that's basically all of the buttons and the functions that are on the outside of the camera. Right before we get back to this video, if you would like to get the Fronos Photo Guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that free guide. Now I wanna run you through the menu system and how I would personally set it up if I was using it. Now I wanna remind you that if you are in full auto mode, you will not have access to the entire menu. So the way you get access to the entire menu is to go out of the auto modes into either manual, AV, TV, or P for program mode, and you will have access to the entire menu system. Now I'm plugged into what's called an Atomos over here so that you guys can follow along and see what the changes are that I am making. This also means that I won't be able to use the touch screen while I'm showing it to you. Just know that if you see something in the menu, you can touch it. All right, let's get into the menu right now. I go ahead and hit menu, and the first thing that I see is image quality. So right here is how you can set the quality of your image. Do you want it to be JPEG large, uh, medium large, or medium, then medium, medium, and then small, small one, and small two is super small, and then what I personally would use if you are just starting out is raw plus JPEG large. Yes, it's going to end up taking up more space on your memory card, but for those who don't know, a JPEG is what's called a compressed file, meaning you take the picture, the camera makes a bunch of changes to it, compresses it, and throws out extra data that it doesn't think you need, and a RAW file, on the other hand, keeps all of that RAW data, but you need to process it, meaning, every single file that you take, you have to post process. So if you're not ready to do that at the beginning, I'm all right with you shooting just JPEG, but I do recommend that you do add the raw shot as well so that you can save that for the future. When I first started out shooting with a DSLR back in 2003, I didn't know if I should shoot raw or JPEG or both. And luckily I shot both until I realized I didn't even need the JPEG anymore. And I'm happy to say that I still have those raw files and I can go back to the original file time and time again, even a decade later and still have all of that data to work with. Because remember, a JPEG is a lossy file, meaning you lose data uh, the more times you save it. Anyway, I say RAW plus JPEG large is what I would set it to. So I go ahead and I selected that and I'm gonna scroll down and this is image review. You can either touch it or scroll down and actually what you'll see is that popping up on the screen, the camera knows it has a built-in menu system, but I'm your built-in menu system, sort of but it is nice that it's there so it can help you understand it. What image review means is that after you take a photo, how long will the image stay on the LCD screen for you to preview it or review it? In this case, it's set to two seconds. I personally turn it off. The reason I turn it off is I don't wanna be taking pictures and not, because I don't always look at this screen after I take a photo, but if you're shooting in a dark situation and you take a picture and then the screen lights up, it makes it harder to see through the viewfinder because of the, the lack, you know, the extra light coming back into your eyes. So I don't like to have that on, so I personally turn it off. Now I'm arrowing down, release shutter without card is currently on. I would go ahead and turn this to disabled because I do not want to be able to take a photo without a card in the camera. Why would you want to be able to take a picture other than for demoing purposes? Why would you want to take a picture if you didn't have a way to save it? Kind of like when I accidentally took a whole lot of pictures thinking I had a roll of film in my camera and I actually didn't. So 
I wish I had that feature back then, but now you have this feature, so go ahead and turn that off. Lens aberration correction is not something I do inside the camera. It's not something I personally worry about. You can do a lot of that fixing inside of Adobe Lightroom, especially with the RAW file. Next up, we have what's called Lens Electronic MF. It says, takes effect with lenses that have electronic focus rings. I didn't even know this thing existed inside the camera. I don't even mess with it. I leave it where it's set. Now, moving on to number two, I just hit the over arrow or you could turn this dial up top and it will change the menu. Uh, exposure comp, I leave that set to zero. Flash control, I have this nulled out currently. Red eye reduction, I leave it disabled as well. Next up, we have ISO speed. Currently, it's set to auto. I don't want the camera making the selection for me for ISO. I wanna make that selection myself. So I can go here and I can use the dial and turn it. And can I turn the top dial too? Nope, just these dials or hit the arrows. And you can see that you can go from auto all the way up to 25,600. So in this case, I could just leave it at 400, but you can make the change on the outside of the camera. We'll show you that later when I show you the back of the screen. Uh, next up, auto ISO max, meaning if you wanted to set the maximum the ISO could go to, here in this case it would be set to 6400 or you could go to 12800, meaning the ISO would not go past that number if it's in auto ISO. Auto lighting optimization, uh, auto correct image brightness and no, you're not touching my images and that wouldn't affect the raw file anyway. So moving on to number three, metering mode. Let's show you the different metering modes. We have evaluative metering. We have partial metering, spot metering, and center weighted metering. So what evaluative means is that it's going to take the brightest and the darkest part of the scene and then give you the average meter reading and that's what it's gonna set the meter for. Uh, partial metering, I don't touch that ever. Next up, we have spot metering, which may come in handy if you're shooting something that's say in front of a really bright background, but they're a little on the darker side, you can get a meter reading for them by going to spot metering because it's gonna only read for what's inside of that spot and not like the evaluative, which is gonna show you everything in the frame. Uh, and then the center weight average, I don't even know what that one is. I never touch it. I leave it personally in evaluative myself. Color space, sRGB, I leave it to there. Picture style is set to auto. Picture style is what affects your JPEG image. It doesn't affect your RAW file. So no matter what you set this for, when you shoot RAW, it doesn't affect it. But when you set your picture style for JPEGs, just know that's what you're gonna be stuck with. So if you set it to standard portrait landscape, fine detail or neutral, that's what your JPEG is going to be stuck with. So if you accidentally go in here and make it over sharpened and your JPEG is over sharpened, you can't take that back. But if you were shooting RAW also, you could go back and make the correction later. You have faithful, you also have monochrome. Monochrome means, yes, you will be shooting in black and white. And if you shoot in black and white, the JPEG's gonna be in black and white, and it's gonna get rid of the color. But if you shoot raw in monochrome, it's gonna show up black and white, but just know that you do have the color data still there. You can bring that back in the computer. Then you can set three different user-defined settings yourself. In most cases, I think auto works pretty darn well unless you know exactly what you're going for. Also know that this does affect your video picture style. Keep that in mind when you're doing that. I hit the OK button to come back out. White balance, I personally leave it on auto white balance unless you know the exact color temperature you're shooting in, then you can set that yourself. You also have custom white balance and white balance shift which I don't touch either. Moving on, I know this is long. There's a lot of stuff in this menu, but it's good to go through it at least once so you understand it. Long exposure noise reduction, I personally leave off. Now remember, this is just for JPEG. High ISO speed noise reduction, I mean, it's set to standard. I kind of turn it off myself because this only affects the JPEG and not the raw file. And then dust delete data, that's if you had dust on your sensor, you could have it always be taken out with software inside the camera, but I don't even worry about that one either. Next up, we have the interval timer. Right now it's disabled, but if you went to enabled, this is so that you could do time lapse. This is a great feature, but currently leaving it to disabled. Anti-flicker shoot, you can leave this to uh, disable or enable, just know if you do enable it, if you're shooting in a place that has flickering lights, what the camera's gonna do is wait till the flicker is over to take the picture, so it may slow down the amount of pictures that you can take and the response time for taking those photos. 
aspect ratio, always shooting 3-2 in my opinion. Uh, I leave it in that because that's how these photos are meant to be taken. That's gonna utilize the full image sensor that you have. Next up, we have live view shoot. Right now it's enabled. What live view means is you're gonna hit this button back here and it's gonna, I'm gonna show you, all right? I'm gonna show you. You turn live view on just like this and now we can shoot photos in live view. This means you hold the camera out like this, you see everything on it. It's not in focus because, well, it's not in focus. But let me turn live view off again by hitting this button. Live view goes off. I'm going back into the menu system. Currently live view is enabled, but if you're never gonna use it, you could disable it so the button doesn't do anything except for when you're shooting videos. Now I'm gonna use this top dial and I'm gonna dial over to the playback menu. Uh, protect images, that's if you wanted to protect images when you're playing them back on your camera so that they're locked and they won't be deleted as easy. I don't even worry about that anymore either. Next up we have rotate image. It says rotate images to change the display orientation. That means if you wanted to show up vertically or horizontally, you can do that. Erase images. I tell you, do not erase images inside the camera. Don't even bother with that just in case you erase something you didn't want to erase. Print order. I don't even know what that says. Choose images to print and configure print. I'm not printing directly from the camera. I don't think you should print directly from the camera either. Canon may shoot me for that one. But if you're gonna do printing, go to the computer and print from the computer. Unless it's a last resort and you need to print from here. Next up, photo book setup. Another thing I don't even touch, creative filters. I stay away from those as well because I, I, if I'm gonna do anything creative, I'm doing it in the computer. And if it's in the camera saying creative filter, it's probably something you don't wanna do with your images anyway because you're better than that. Remember, you are better than creative filters. Uh, moving on, cropping. If you wanna crop, look, this whole menu is for anything that you wanna do inside the camera. Most of this stuff is what you could do after the fact because it's just much easier to do when you get back to the computer. So I'm gonna move on to the third menu here. AF point display is currently disabled. I actually like this. We're going to enable it. What this means is when you're reviewing an image again uh, after you took it, it's gonna show you the red squares for where you were focusing. And if you were in Moscow and in the red square, you could have a red square inside of the red square. Let me know how that one works out for you. Histogram display, it could be either set to brightness histogram or the RGB histogram. I think that the brightness histogram is a better option than the RGB one. We'll explain the histogram in a little bit more detail, but not much when we show that on the screen. Moving on to the wrench menu. This is where you can select the folder where you want the images to be saved. I just leave this to where it's going to save them. File numbering, continuous. I like to have it on continuous because if I take 100 pictures during this shoot, take the card out, come back to take more, I don't want it to start at one again. I want it to start at 101, so I do continuous. Auto rotate, I leave it exactly where it's set right now. Specified display orientation for vertical shots when you play them back. Yep, so I leave that there. Format, formatting is extremely important. Now I'm not gonna format this card because I have pictures on it that I took and I don't want to erase them. But if I was starting fresh with this card in the camera, I would absolutely format before I start taking pictures. It's a good habit to get into to reformat your card when you're ready to do a photo shoot. But remember, if you reformat your card, make sure that you've backed up all of the images or videos that you already took because when you format it, it makes it much harder to get them back even with special software after the fact. So be careful with formatting your card. I'm hitting cancel. Good, I hit it. Wireless communication settings. This is where you would set up your Wi-Fi in the camera and NFC as well. Moving to number two, we've got auto power off. We have it set to disabled so it doesn't turn off while I'm talking to you and screw up our recording, but you can set that to, what are the other options? Ooh, look at that, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or are those minutes? I don't know, how many, two hash marks, one hat, leave a comment. One hash mark is a minute, no, two minutes. No, is, is, a, is a minute, is an hour. I don't even know what hash marks mean. Whatever, I leave it off. Next up, we have LCD brightness. I personally leave it right in the middle because if you start going too bright or too dark and you shoot in manual, it may mess up your visual of basically what your exposure should be, meaning you may make it too bright when it should actually be dark or too dark when it should be bright. 
Next up, we have LCD auto off. I currently have this on disabled. Automatically turns off the LCD monitor when you look into the viewfinder. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. There's a proximity sensor. I forgot to mention that because it blended in in the shade, which means it's going to automatically turn off the display when you put your eye up to it, and it's going to turn it back on when you remove it from the viewfinder. This is up to you. It's actually a pretty good thing to have. We have it disabled right now for making this video. Then you've got date time zone. Obviously, that's where you set the time and date, and also you change it when daylight saving times happen. There's actually a button in there for that as well. Languages, you can check all the different lang- Ooh, yeah. I want to make it- that's Polish, right? No, that's Poliski is that. This is Russian right above it. So if you're in Red Square, you want to get a Red Square, you want to feel more Russian, you can set it to Russian, but I'm going to set it to English because I'm an American and that's all the languages that I know. Unlike the rest of the world that knows multiple languages, we don't learn multiple languages here very well. Uh, viewfinder display, I'm gonna go in here. Here we have electronic level, which could show up in your viewfinder. I don't rely on the electronic level. I rely on my eyes lining things up. I'm not a big fan of it. I know a lot of people rely on it, but I just like to get my lines as straight as possible. So I leave that on hide. Grid display, if you wanna have the rule of thirds showing up or a tic-tac-toe board, which is larger than that, you can put on grid display. And flicker detection is simple. It basically flicks. I should probably turn this off because I don't care if it's picking up the flicker. It's just basically saying if you're in an area where it picks up a flicker, it's gonna say your lights are flickering. It's not a big deal. I get rid of that. Now back into the menu system. Next up, you have GPS device settings. That's if you have a GPS uh, attached to this, you can do that, but currently you don't. Video system, this is what you said if you wanna shoot NTSC or you wanna shoot PAL. Uh, touch controls, I leave it on standard. Beep is enabled, meaning when I go to take a picture, if I'm in single focus, it's going to beep. It's gonna make an audible sound letting me know, Jared, yes, you're in focus. I do like that, that helps me when I'm shooting, but if you need to turn that off when you are in a quiet area, you go in here and you put it on disabled. I'm gonna leave it on enabled. Here you have battery info. You can see how much battery power you have left, at least based off of a grid. It doesn't give you numbers for whatever reason, but you can see that we have a full battery right now. Then we've got info button display options. Ooh, look at that, an electronic level. Is it moving like Star Wars? No, it's not. Um, so I leave this checked exactly where it is, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK again. Again, this is a long video. There's a lot of menus in this camera, but hopefully this is helping you out. I, this would have helped me out when I first got a camera. I would have not had to call my teachers at school to help me, and they didn't help me anyway. Sensor cleaning, the camera's automatically gonna clean, I believe, when, you, yep, there it is. Auto cleaning is enabled, so every time you turn off the camera, it's going to clean the sensor. Basically, it's shaking one of the filters, and it's hopefully knocking any dust off of the sensor that may be there, so I leave it enabled right there. Uh, Multi-function lock, that is that lock I showed you down here at the bottom. It's gonna show you what it's gonna lock. You, I guess you could have, oh wow, you could have it lock the touch screen. You could also have it lock the top dial. Uh, I don't really lock very many things often, but if you feel that the touch screen is bothering you, you can lock it, you can set that right here. So I'm leaving it in the default where it was. Ah, custom functions. Go in here, there are a lot of different custom functions to play with. This is really what you find in higher end professional Canon cameras, but it's nice that they put it into this camera. A lot of this comes to personal preference. I haven't gone through this yet with setting up this camera, but this is just something that you can play with to change whether you want your focus to be back button focus, do you want it to be with the front button? This is where you would go to make all those changes, but being that there's 14 different settings that you can change in here, I'm gonna leave it to you guys to figure out which ones are best for you. This one is more trial and error, uh, so moving on. You could clear all the settings, I don't recommend you do that. Copyright information, you can put in copyright like photo by Jared Polin and my email or my phone number, which I'm not giving you right now, but you can put that in there so it's saved in the metadata. Manual software URL, why in the, oh, look at that. If you have a QR code reader, which is so passe, you can click on that and it will take you to Canon. Is it take you to Canon.com slash ICPD. Whatever that is, Insane Clown Posse. Moving on to the next number five. Uh, certification logo display, that's just because the law says they have to put that there. And then the firmware, this is where you would go to upgrade your firmware if you needed to upgrade it. Moving on to the next menu, this means you can set the shooting screen 
to the new guide view. Now it's not set there to default. This is gonna help you if you want more blurry image in the background versus a sharper image in the background. If you're new and you want some visual help on the back of the screen, the guide may be good for you, but personally, I would leave it on standard uh, and I'd leave the rest where they are. And the last thing you have here in the menu is your menu. So if you wanna get to something quickly like enable or disable the beep, then you would put that into your menu so that you can quickly get to that and make the changes. And that's the menu as it pertains to photos, but why don't I get into the menu as it pertains to video? So the way that you get into the video menu is you go into video mode just like this, and then you hit the menu button. So there you have it. Now I'm still in the tab that's my tab, but I'm gonna scroll back over and now you can see the settings for getting your video set. So right here is where you would go for the recording size. Do you wanna shoot at 59.94 frames, AKA 60 frames a second? Do you wanna do 30 frames a second? Do you wanna do 30 frames a second light? So it looks like they have standard and light IPB. If I was to guess light is a smaller compressed file, I always say shoot in the higher quality file that you can when you're doing video because you can always dumb it down. You can't ever dumb it back up. Now a lot of people shoot in, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I'm not even looking. I'm looking at the 2959. That's how much time you can shoot with. Um, so I'm gonna get over here to the, yep, 23.98 frames or 24 frames. Now what 24 frames is, it's considered to be cinematic. That's 24 frames in a second. That's what you tend to see when you watch a movie or those cinematic TV shows. That's a good place to shoot if you're trying to do something creative. Digital zoom, eh, eh, disabled always. Sound recording, set to auto. If you're gonna put a microphone on here, you can go ahead and set that to manual. You just need to be careful when you're setting it to manual. Make sure you understand how to set manual for audio levels that you're looking for. So I'm gonna go back out here. We've got lens aberration correction. Again, I don't touch that. And same thing with the electronic MF. I don't touch that as well. Now moving, oh, and one thing you will notice is that the mirror will be locked up the entire time that your menu is open, meaning that it's chewing up battery to keep it up in the air. I don't know why Canon does that. That's something they should probably change. Exposure comp, I leave that right in the middle. ISO speed, I don't leave it in auto, but you can set it for yourself uh, for video and make the changes. Auto ISO max, you can leave that the same as well, especially if you're not doing auto ISO. Moving on, picture styles. This is what you wanna set if you wanna set your picture styles for shooting video. I do recommend it, but remember, if you set it to monochrome, you are baking your final file to only be black and white. You will not have color data. White balance, I leave that on auto unless you know the exact color temperature that you're shooting in, then it may be good to set that right here in the camera as well. Moving on to number four, Movie Servo AF. This is enabled. This camera has what's called Dual Pixel AF, which is one of the most incredible, and I congratulate you for having a camera that has Dual Pixel AF, which is awesome autofocus when it comes to video. Most cameras on the market can't do what this Canon camera does, and it does a fantastic job with it. So when it's enabled, you can actually let it follow somebody, it will totally track them and do a great job at it. Or you can also switch it where you can touch the back screen, the back of the LCD, and it's gonna cinematically move from foreground to background or wherever you touch on the screen. AF method, you can see you've got the uh, choose the autofocus method in live view shooting. You have that right there. Metering timer. Uh, have that set, I guess, to eight seconds. Grid view is off. Next, we have button function. What that means is shutter button function as it pertains to when you're shooting video. I think you can change that to do uh, autofocus as well. Uh, moving to this. If this is all set to disabled, I'm leaving it to disabled, but I do wanna point out that the Movie Digital IS is a five axis digital stabilization. It's not optical, it's digital, and some lenses that you have are optical stabilizations that in combination with the digital may actually give you some really nice results. Uh, then you've got your playback, and then the rest of the menus are basically the same that you would find if you were doing just still images. So that, guys, is running you through the entire menu system. That is a lot to get through, but 
It should help you the first time you set up your camera so you get off to a running start. Now I know if you're watching this video, you have some camera gear, but my question to you is how do you organize and protect it? Well, if you're not sure, check out my brand new app called My Gear Vault. It's absolutely free. It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear so you know what you have and what it's worth. Head on over to mygearvault.com to download it right now. Now I want to show you guys the shooting display and what you're going to see on the back of your camera and how you make changes to it. Now keep in mind, you do have a touch screen on this camera. Now because I'm plugged into the Atomos right over here, I lose the touch screen functionality, but I will point out where touch screen works and what button I'm hitting back here in the camera. Now what you would see on the back of the camera is shown on the screen right now. And how do you make changes quickly on the back of the camera without having to go into the menus. Well, you can simply touch the screen and hit the Q button, or in my case, I'm gonna hit the Q button and look at this. I have access to change everything. If I wanna change the shutter speed, I go ahead and I turn this top dial right here. If I highlight the aperture, I can even turn the top dial or I should be able to turn, yep, I can turn this dial as well to make the changes and you can see it all happening in real time. Same thing with the ISO. Or you could touch it and make any change that you want. This is an awesome feature to have on the back of the camera. So awesome to get it. So this is where you change your focus modes. And right now it's set to one shot, but I could change it to AI focus or AI servo. Now let me explain what they are. AI servo is continuous focus, continuous autofocus. As long as you press your finger halfway down on the shutter button, it's going to continually focus. Now if I went ahead and I switched that to the AI focus, AI focus is actually choosing between servo and single, and that's where the camera is making the decision for you, and I recommend that you don't let the camera make the decision for you when you're shooting stills. AI servo is more for action. If you're shooting sports or subjects that are constantly moving and you want to continually focus them, you use AI servo. Now I would never use AI focus, but I would use one shot. One shot is what you use when you're shooting a stationary subject. Uh, portraits, uh, landscapes, things along those lines, still lifes. And what happens is you will press your finger halfway down on the shutter button and when it's in focus, you'll hear a beep if you have that enabled and it will stay locked as long as your finger is pressed on the button. If you need to recompose and refocus, then if you move or your subject moves, that's where you wanna refocus, recompose, keep your finger pressed halfway down, listen for that beep and you will be back into focus. Now moving on, next to this, we have the, what do we have here? Ah, yes, we have the different selection modes for how you're going to do your focusing points. In this case, you can independently go through and select where you want your focusing point to be. And under the next one, I have to hit this top button right here to make it change. We've got a larger area for group focus. They call this zone AF. That's great if you're, say, shooting sports and you're not sure where the focus point should be. This gives you a greater chance of getting it where you want it to be. Then we've got large zone AF. I kind of never shoot there myself. And then auto selection AF is where the camera is gonna make all of the choices and decisions for you where you should autofocus. The only time I've ever used something like this is when I was shooting fighter jets because I didn't know where the focus was gonna be. Now to get out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit menu, moving over. We've already talked about the different metering modes. That's where you could change them. This is where you can get into how many frames you're gonna shoot. This is one frame every time you press the button. This is high speed continuous, meaning when you press the shutter button and hold it down, it's gonna take many pictures in a row. If you still wanna take many pictures in a row but do it slower, you would do it right here in low speed continuous. Then you could do self timer 10 seconds, self timer two seconds, and then self timer continuous shot where you can set it between two and 10 shots in a row. So if you wanted to say, get in front of the camera and do a selfie and take 10 pictures of yourself for some unknown reason, I've actually done it myself, so maybe you would actually use it. You could set it to 10 frames and you can make some cool poses because it's gonna take 10 shots in a row. Moving over here, you, would, you could change your RAW plus JPEG. I would leave this set officially and forever and forever all the time. Now I wanna talk about Live View. Now there's two ways to get into Live View. There's Live View for stills and Live View for video. To get into Live View for stills, which I showed you earlier, you just press this button right here and it turns on Live View. Now how do we get into it for video? We just move the switch from on, not to off, 
but to that camera on a tripod and it turns us into live view. Look, live view, there you have it, there's Steven. Hey, and you can see that it's continually auto-focusing because this camera is amazing with its autofocus. So you can actually make changes to a lot of the functions on the screen right now by hitting the Q button. And you can see that it pulls up all of these different options. You can change your picture style, your white balance, you can change the video snapshot modes, the movie digital IS, you have access to the movie record size. Everything is right here at your disposal when you are shooting your video. But the question is, how do we actually start recording video? We hit this button right here, you'll see a red dot there, it's the live view button. Now we're gonna hit video, and boom, right there, we've got video going. I can zoom in on this camera that's recording us, and it's auto-focusing. I can jump over to here, it's auto-focusing. I can jump over to the Wheel of Fro, the mini Wheel of Fro, and it's auto-focusing. And there you have it, guys. You can also see your different settings at the bottom. If you touch the screen there, you can change your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO. Everything is there for you to stop recording. By the way, you get 29 minutes and 59 seconds in record time, and this is counting up. The old cameras that Canon made always counted down, which is pretty interesting. So anyway, we're gonna stop that right now. There you have it, we stopped that. Now how do we preview or review the images or the video we just shot? We go here and we hit the playback button. So right now I could use the touch screen to cycle through to see different photos if I wanted to and the different video. There you see the red squares because we enabled being able to see the focus points where we had them. Remember if we were in red square, you could have a red square and your camera could speak Russian. Not actually, you can't be like, camera speak Russian. It would be like, niet, niet, da. Yeah, that's all I know in Russian. Uh, babushka, ah, that's it. Anyway, so you've got that on the screen, but you also have this button right here I haven't talked about in a while, the info button. We can hit info and you can see how the image was taken. You could also see uh, whether, it, this is just showing me the JPEG, what number it is, and then you hit it again. That's where you have that histogram. Remember the histogram I was talking about, whether you could do RGB or uh, brightness? This is the brightness histogram, and to say it real quick, the way that a histogram works is it's a representation of the proper exposure for your camera. And the rule of thumb is if there's a nice spike in the middle, then generally speaking, that means your exposure is right. Now it's not always spot on because it will be different in certain situations, but that's the quick of it. There's a lot of information online about that one. And I hit info again, and I am right back to here. Now what would we do if we wanted to delete this? Well, we could hit the delete button, AKA the trash can. If you hit it, Oscar the Grouch pops up. He doesn't actually pop up, though that would be kind of funny. I still recommend not deleting photos on the camera, but if you really wanted to, scroll over to erase, hit the set button or just touch it and erase it. In this case, I'm gonna hit cancel and that's pretty much it, guys. I know it's a long video. There's a lot of information, a lot of details here, but I hope it helps you out and use this as a reference to come back to. But I also wanna remind you that I have over 2,500 free videos on YouTube, so be sure to check out fronosphoto.com as well as my channel here on YouTube. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and a comment down below to let me know. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.